For GateWorld.net, I'm David Reed. I'm here with Mr. Michael Greenberg. Right. You were an executive producer on Stargate Atlantis for eight seasons. Right. No, Stargate. S- Stargate SG-1. SG-1. Yeah. What an idiot I am. That's, That's okay. Right. No, I'm the idiot. Just ask myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are in sports now. Yeah, well, I started in sports oh, uh, right after SC Film School. I started in sports and... Uh, and Actually, I worked uh, for uh, NBC uh, for Don Olmeyer, to be uh, specific. Don Olmeyer had his own production company. He actually gave me my producing break. He was executive producer of sports for ABC and then NBC. And then in his NBC contract, he uh, got into film. And I was always into film. And I knew Don from when I was a production assistant uh-huh. in high school back in New York. Uh-huh. And he actually gave me my producing break on a miniseries called The Golden Moment. So that's when I made the transition <clears throat> into film, which is what I'd been studying at USC. And um, just sort of from, from The Golden Moment, I, I ended up spending uh, five years at Warner Brothers working with uh, uh, George England and, and Joanne Woodward there. And then, um, um, I got a call from the head of production at Paramount, Mike Schoenbroom, who um, I actually took a production course when I was at USC at Paramount, and I met Mike there. He was the assistant director of Mannix and Mission Impossible, the series, the original series. Mm-hmm. And he called me that they were having trouble with this show that was, you know, um, uh, a big action adventure television show, and what I consider coming over to. Um, produce it and it was MacGyver and I thought I was coming he said just come over for a few months get it back on track then you can go back (laughs) doing your films and uh, you know seven years later I was still with MacGyver (laughs) so in the process you fell in love with the the show and yeah MacGyver was a great show it's an iconic television show and Rick made it what it was I mean his you know his on-camera persona sort of the uh, television's answer to Harrison Ford. I mean, he really made it what it is. Without his personality, I don't think Mm-mm. it would have uh, been as iconic Mm-mm. as it ended up. I wouldn't mean, have MacGyver. been the same. It's still talked about today. Mm-hmm. My kids are watching it now. They're watching mm-hmm. the box sets, and their friends are watching it and mm-hmm. loving it. I mean, it's a great show. Well, it's become a part of American lexicography. Yeah, you know, it it's, it's 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 real to us and as as true to us as "Live Long and Prosper" and "Beam Me Up, Scotty." Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. I need to MacGyver a way out of this. Right. So, and the Simpsons picked up on it in Saturday Night Live. And, that's exactly right. You know, you did something when you're being uh, spoofed. <laughs> yeah. It's the highest form of praise. Right. Um, so, had you not known Rick before then? Oh uh, no, I met him on MacGyver first okay. day on the set. Oh wow! Okay. <clears throat> and uh, uh, went to his dressing room, introduced myself. I think Henry Winkler may have been there too, and um, um, we immediately hit it off because uh, the first thing I wanted to do was get rid of all the voiceovers. I just thought that was, uh, you know, more indicative of a radio show I think I said at the time and we're doing film Mm -hmm. and let the pictures do the talking I don't know you know why the character has to talk so much that was the one thing that stood out in the um, tapes that they sent me back then it was tapes not DVDs Uh, and the tapes that they sent me and um, and he I think he got up, gave me a big hug, and said, this is going to be great, because, yeah, I don't want to do that anymore either. Oh, so, uh, Rick did? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I think that's when we first sort of uh, hit it off, um, uh-huh. you know, over the concept of where to take the show from that point. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it wasn't me. You know, it was, it was a collective um, uh, creative environment with Steve Downing and John Rich and Henry Winkler all the way down through our writing staff. I mean, everybody got in sync, and yeah. that's how we were able to sustain seven years. Well, you know, and two movies that we shot oh, exactly. in London. Yeah. Well, it's such a visually oriented show. You know, it hasn't. I mean, di- dialogue, of course, is key in any show. But you know, it's always for me. It was always like, what's he going to come up with next? How is yeah. he going to solve the next problem? That was our problem too. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Huh. Was there a lot of research involved? Oh, a ton of research. Yeah, a ton of research. And we had a great staff. Yeah. You know, one of them was Chris Haddock, who went on to be incredibly successful here. One of the more prolific writer-producers in Canada with uh, Mom P.I. and um, Da Vinci's Inquest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We've stayed good friends, and uh, we had a great staff. When did Gecko start? 
Gecko started the last couple years of MacGyver. Okay. Um, before that, it was called Pig Dog. Pig Dog? Yeah, but our agents and business managers thought that um, we should have more of a serious name. And you, you once told me, I think at Gig Con, <coughs> the, the origins of why you chose Gecko. Yeah, Gecko, uh, we were in Tahiti just on holiday from MacGyver. And um, the, the legend of a gecko is that it, um, their eyes move independently and uh, they're known for keeping, in the South Pacific, they're known for keeping one eye on the road and one eye on the future. Yeah. So that was the... Uh, Appropriate. Yeah. And um, Brad and... Uh, Robert. Rob, well, not not at that point. No. Um, when uh, Brad got together with Jonathan Glasner, Jonathan, yeah. How did you, how did you guys get all um, roped in? I got a phone call from uh, um, uh, John Symes. Okay. John Symes was our executive at Paramount on MacGyver. He went over to become president of MGM, and he called saying um, that um, they were making Stargate the movie into a television show. Would be we be interested? Um, had you seen it? Yeah, I'd seen the film. And um, so um, I think uh, Rick's first reaction was he didn't see how he could do that character. It, Kurt Russell, play, it was a different guy. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, but then Syme said, what if I told you it was a 44-episode commitment? And then I said, well, yeah, then that's definitely something to think about. <laughs> and so Rick looked at the, at the movie and a couple of creative uh, sessions with John and Brad and Jonathan mm -hmm. uh, showed Rick that he would have the ability to stretch the character and make it more, you know, like he is. Mm -hmm. um, not quite as stretched as Legend, but at right. least he had, you know, he had um, room to, to work. Yeah, even at Comic Con mentioned the episode Cold Lazarus, which was kind of the turning point. It was a closure on yeah. the Kurt Russell character and kind of like Jack not necessarily forgiving himself, but at least right. moving on and right. becoming much more interesting right. as, a, as a character. Right. And you hung on for eight seasons with, with yeah. that show. Yeah, eight seasons. It was, uh, it was fun. It went by pretty quickly. Really? And what I loved about it is, you know, I got to stay um, current with the state-of-the-art technology and uh, composite work, you know, the uh, mm -hmm. computer-generated stuff that we were tying into live action. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me... It was like, uh, you know, uh, eight years of a phenomenal grad school where you just stay... Learning. Yeah, you know, you stay current with all the state-of-the-art technology, which t in today's age is so important. I mean, you just look at the Olympics opening ceremonies. I mean, I mean that just blew everyone's mind. And, you know, so that was the thing is if we could keep blowing people's minds, you know, week after week and, mm -hmm. you know, testing everyone's technical ability as well as the you know, the dramatic uh, work that we're doing on the set, leave that up to the actors and, you know, the words that they say up to the writers. But, you know, production, you know, challenges just gave us more uh, uh, more goals to, to strive yeah. for and accomplish. And uh, with a great special effects team with James Tishner and, uh, and John Gadecki and, uh, you know, they're, they're just you know, great guys who are really conversant with that, you know, arena of composite work. And it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun just, you know, testing our uh, abilities in filmmaking. What, and, what know, do you miss from, what do you miss about the eight years the most? Uh, um, that, that whole experience. What do I miss? Oh, probably just hanging out with everybody. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's an old cliche, but you do become a family. And uh, it's like playing on a sports team. Um, mm -hmm. You know, probably just hanging out, hanging out mm -hmm. with everyone, because you're, you know, work is work, but then at the right. end of the day, it's relationships and and um, hanging out. <laughs> well, so much of the, the television <clears throat> business comes becomes very apparent when you're an executive producer. Like right. when you're an actor, like there's this whole political and like relations with with um, uh, the TV executives that they don't have to deal with. Yeah. You know, did you have to put up with a lot of that? Was uh, that a lot you know, of the day to day? I really didn't, because I was on the set the whole time. Uh, oh, Brad were... Wright and uh, and Robert Cooper dealt with the uh, network executives and studio people. I really didn't have to, so that was a blessing. So you got to have fun. Yeah, I got to have fun. Sweet. They shielded all that.
All right. And what happened after Stargate? Where'd you move on to next? <clears throat> after Stargate, I went to, um, uh, I started developing stuff on my own, and then um, one of which was I got the rights with my brother to the uh, New York Times best-selling book, Game of Shadows, which is about um, Barry Bonds, Balco, Marion Jones, and the whole steroid scandal that sort of rocked track and field yeah. and baseball at a time when baseball was just coming back uh, mm -hmm. into popularity and, and financial success. So um, everyone knows that this is the steroid era in sports, and it's sort of cast a gray cloud over everything. All the Olympics, not so much this Olympics, but of course the testing hasn't come back yet. You know, they all get tested after the event, and then two weeks later we hear the bombshells. Exactly. Anyway, we're doing that movie for HBO Films. Ron Shelton and John Norville are writing it, um, um, and they're actually polishing it now. And Ron Shelton will be directing it, and he, you know, he's probably the most prolific and best sports drama filmmaker of our generation. He's a good friend of mine and my brothers, and we're having a blast. Cool. And you're also in the sports and, field yeah, right and now? And I'm also executive producer of uh, Score Productions, which is the production arm for uh, uh, the, the Score Sports Channel mm -hmm. Network. And it's a, it's a full media company. We also have hardcore sports radio on Sirius mm -hmm. Satellite, uh, Channel 98. So it's, you know, 24-7, 365 sports. We mm -hmm. eat up a lot of uh, programming. We're the basketball network in Canada for the NBA. We carry 60 games a year, uh, and more, and plus 20 Raptor games. So we're, um, you know, it's fun. It's great. And a great group, great group of people. Mm -hmm. So I got, you know, my family back in the uh, business world as well. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as you're still having fun, you know, yeah. and that's worth oh, it. And getting paid fun. for it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. A lot so. of traveling, but a lot of fun. So, and still making time for family and everything Oh, like yeah. That. That's, great that's young the most man you important. Have. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, so. well, DJ grew up on the uh, Stargate set. Yeah, he knows Wiley. Is, yeah. <laughs> oh, they, he's known Wiley since she was like two days old. <laughs> oh, they, man. they were like first friends, you know? Ah. Uh. Yeah, they grew up together on the set. So you're still in, in touch with Rick a lot? Oh, yeah, sure. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, for life, we're brothers, yeah.